Hello, welcome to another edition of Around Town. I'm your host, Larry Crippen. Welcome along to a program that's going to give us a lot of information about what's going on with the county, because we have as our guest a guy that comes here quite a bit to uh, be on our program, Precinct 3 Commissioner Bill Doggett. Welcome to the program, Bill. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's just get right to it on uh, some of the things we need to know. Uh, this is an issue discussed by the commissioner's court. You know, the issue discussed regarded taking action on reevaluating an EMS contract with UTMB concerning 911 calls at TDCJ units located in the county. Tell us about that. Absolutely. We have seven prison units here in Walker County, and our ambulance service responds as their 911 service provider. So way back in 2009, we signed an agreement with UTMB there, the ambulance or the medical side of TDCJ, and to provide medical um, ambulance service to the prison units. That contract was a five-year contract and expired in 2014. They renewed it in 2015. And it looks like right now, like we don't have an operating contract. We've been paying the same rate we were paid since 2015. So we're looking into that. We're going to have some action at the court, bring some people in, get all the facts, and negotiate what we can as far as pay. But we also realize TDCJ is going to make us pay what the rest of the state pays. We won't have a, we won't have a unique deal. They'll just put us on the list with the rates that everybody else pays. And tell us about uh, any improvements underway in ambulance and uh, fire service in the Riverside area. I'm, I tell you, I'm pretty excited about that. The emergency service district out there in the Riverside area has come a long way in the last couple of years. A couple of commissioners' court meetings ago, we signed an agreement with them where they're going to build us an ambulance station in the Riverside area, in the city of Riverside area. And once they get that built, we're going to put a crew out there, a full-time ambulance crew, and an ambulance will be stationed in the Riverside area. And we'll reduce that response time from what is now sometimes close to 30 minutes for an ambulance to get there down to single-digit numbers. That's super exciting. And at the same time, they're standing up what's called a duty crew on the fire departments. You know, we're really struggling in the rural areas, especially with volunteer fire departments. People are so busy now, they don't they don't have time to be firemen. So during the day when people have regular jobs, they can't respond to the fire alarms. And that area has suffered for a while. So they've been working with the New Waverly Fire Department, kind of copying their model, which has been very successful down there, to hire a couple of full-time firemen that will serve shifts I don't know the hours, but generally they're 12 hour shifts, probably Monday through Friday. So we'll have at least some basic fire coverage in the Riverside. And then the ambulance will be parked right next door to them if they need that. So that's super good news from the northeast part of town. And I understand uh, annual performance evaluations of department heads is underway. Uh, Fill us in on that. We have, I believe it's four department heads that used to answer to the court or to the judge specifically. Over the last couple of years, I guess, we've moved all four of those under the supervision of the entire court. Well, due to open meeting laws and stuff like that, it's hard for us to go visit with this guy one at a time and do an evaluation kind of one-on-one. So it's been an idea brought to court, and I'm 100% for it, to let these guys come in. Right now we're talking about quarterly, but that might change. Update us on what they've been doing and allow us to kind of review their their performance and offer them assistance where they need it and let them tell us what they need to be successful in their position. So I think it's a good step forward for us that I think will help those guys get a better control of what they're doing and be able to handle their job that much better. And, Bill, there was a lot of discussion on a memorandum of agreement between the uh, county and the New Waverly 4-H Community Club. Update us on that. You know, this is another pretty exciting thing happening down south. Commissioner Decker down there has been working with the 4-H and the school district trying to bring more things for the kids down there. So this is a an agreement that we have a piece of property behind the way station that they want to put a basically a big covered arena where they can hold events under the 4-H umbrella. And there's they have a lot. It's it's shooting, it's bows and arrows, it's horses, and it's cows, it's all that stuff like that. So they have, they have a great place to come do all that located right in central New Waverly. So it's, that's pretty awesome. The DPS folks showed up 
Monday and express a little concern about some of the trucks they pull off the highway because it's going to be right next to that facility. And they just wanted us to know that, hey, if there's a problem, they bring a truck in, they might have something on it that they don't want the public being around, that they have the ability to, to call 4-H and say, hey, can you all you know, evacuate the facility? And we gave them our 100 percent support on that. So I think it's going to be great for New Waverly. It's going to be great for the kids. And that means it's great for Walker County. And I know you're on the uh, board for Safe House, and they have something going on that's tied to uh, an emergency preparedness. Tell us about that. I am on the board of the Safe House. I'm very proud of that. It's an organization that it's, lack of a better way to say, it's a shame that we need it, but we do. It's, you know, sometimes people have problems at the house, and they go out the front door with the clothes on their back, and that's all they have. And the Safe House is there to help them get back on their feet and provide them some essentials and some counseling and directions to go. So we have we help hundreds of Walker County neighbors year-round over there. And last year, Butch Davis out at the Walker County Emergency Operations put together an emergency preparedness fair at the storm shelter. And we thought at the safe house, it would be a good idea for us to help sponsor that. So we were the sponsor of that show last year. And I think they looked at more than 300 people showed up and got to meet over, I think it was 30 emergency responding entities from all over the state that have, well, they had cute little things to hand out, you know, so they were there that made it a fun day, but a lot of information about what to do if your house floods or the road washes out or a tree falls on your car, just from basic to losing everything you have. So it was a, it was a good way to get a lot of people in the room and exchange information that hopefully you never need, but if you do, it's there for you. Well, Precinct 3, Commissioner Bill Dalgett, thanks for being our guest. Anytime, Larry. I love coming here.